Hey guys, welcome back, or welcome, um, I'm Lauren, <clears throat> and yeah, I'm probably boring everyone to death with my videos, but that's okay, if you are here to watch, you're here to watch, if not, cool, have a nice life, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to talk about traumatic anniversaries, because I, I, I feel like a lot of times people are like, oh, an anniversary is always a good thing, and... That's not necessarily true, because there's anniversaries of death, there's anniversaries of divorce, um, just tragedies, 9-11, for example, that's an anniversary, a real fucked up one, um, and, uh, October 5th is one for me, and it's not something I usually mentally prepare for, and, you know, my mom texts me, and it, it just got me thinking, it got me messed up, uh, because... You know, it's been nine years this year, and it still just sends me directly back to that day. And uh, what happened to me was, um, <clears throat> fun fact, uh, if you're up for almost four days straight, you're most likely to collapse. And uh, if you do it behind the wheel, that's, that's no good. So um, what happened was, is I was living in... Montana, really rural area. Um, I was living in an apartment above my grandma's garage, and I was working at a really haunted ass hotel. And uh, <laughs> I just was slowly descending into madness, being in the middle of nowhere. She was a flight attendant, so she wasn't always home. Um, so that was an issue. Uh, So, uh, yeah, I mean, that was, that was part of the problem. I was alone, a lot, alone with my mind just crumbling, um, <clears throat> to sit there and contemplate the darkness, you know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, she was in Dubai, India, and I was just chilling at the house and, uh, you know, for some reason, I was up for, you know, over 72 hours, and I felt fine. Felt great. Felt like freaking Superman. I, it didn't, didn't bug me. Come to find out, <laughs> I was having a manic episode that turned into a psychotic break when the, uh, <laughs> the water heater decided to tell me to get out Amityville Horror Style. Yeah, no, I, I was definitely losing it, and, um, I'd been up for almost 72 hours, and, and the Gulch, everybody in the Gulch decided we were going to do an Oktoberfest of our own design, and, uh, me, you know, taking German in high school, I was like, oh, I'll make Pflaumekuchen, and, uh, you know, bring that as a dessert. So I knew I had to go get ingredients, and plums weren't in season, so I was going to make Apfelkuchen, which is, um, apples. Um, and, uh, you know, the local grocery store was really expensive, and Helena was about an hour away, and uh, I was excited to see all the Halloween stuff they had out at the stores anyway, and so I had called my mom, she didn't answer, it was about 7 in the morning, I ate a packet of oatmeal, and I took a bath, and called my mom, just to see what she was up to, but she didn't answer, so, nah, whatever. Um, and then I called my coworker, and I was going to invite her out with me to, um, go on this adventure to Helena, and, um, I'm really glad I didn't, because she'd be dead. If I had had a passenger that day, they would have been crushed to death. Um, anyway. So, yeah, I felt good. I went filled the car with gas, and I drove to Helena, and I went to Kmart, and I went to Walmart, and got some groceries, got some cool Halloween stuff, and bought myself a little, you know, one of those Starbucks iced coffees in the glass, um, the glass bottle, bought myself one of those, um, had some cigarettes, whatever, uh, and, um, 
yeah, I got the apples I needed and all the ingredients to make the Apfelkuchen and I was planning on going home and making that for the Gulch's Oktoberfest later that day. Um, so I'm driving back on Highway 200 and, and it, for those not familiar with the area, this is extremely rural. There is no radio signal, there is no cell service, there is nothing. It's just trees and hills on either side and there's drop-offs and guardrails and there's not shit, <laughs> honestly. And uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a lazy stretch of highway in the middle of the woods, basically. And, um, yeah, I was listening to the radio and it finally cut out, so I just turned it off. And this is about this time I started to feel tired. I mean, I had, I'd started to feel a little bit tired and I thought to myself, ah, oh, maybe I'll take a nap and then I'll make the Apfelkuchen and, and go to the little Oktoberfest, whatever. And I just need to get home and unload the groceries, it'll be fine. Little did I know. Oh boy, little did I know. Anyway. So yeah. I'm driving. And... What? <sighs> One sec. Guys, please don't. Uh-uh. That's enough. Hey, hi. Somebody was being naughty and they were on the counter. The boys were on the counter. Anyway. Um, yeah, so. <sighs> the radio had cut out. So I turned it off. And, um. I, um. I started to nod off. Behind the wheel. And, um. I didn't have memory of this day for a very long time. It was, a uh, Sometimes your brain responds to trauma by just completely obliterating a memory. Um, selective amnesia type shit. And, uh, for a long time I didn't, I didn't remember this at all. Um, came back to me in bits and pieces, came back to me in dreams, um, that kind of thing. Nightmares, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, um, so, <sighs> I started to nod off, and there was some people driving behind me that saw this starting to occur. I was swerving, and I was trying to stay awake, and I you know, I still felt pretty good. I was like, I'm going to make it. It'll be fine. I just need to roll the windows down. Uh, you know, smoke a cigarette. Just stay awake. Right? I should have pulled over. I didn't. I wasn't thinking. I just wasn't thinking straight in general. It was, it was not a good time in my life. <laughs> I mean... I was trying to have a long-distance romantic relationship with a freaking class X felon convict. Um, just lots of shit. I was 18. It was a whole thing. So, the people behind me start seeing me swerve a little bit. And then, finally, I just blacked out. Shut down. And I went off the road. And where I went off the road, there was a turn off onto a dirt road off this highway, right? Um, and the water runoff over years and years and years had made this dirt road almost like a ramp. So what happened is I went off the road and hit the side of that dirt road and just, it launched the car. I hit it going 70 and I launched the car up over the guardrail into a tree and then rolled down into the campsite that that road led to. 
And let me tell you, there was barking dogs. There was, I mean, there was just the sound of <laughs> the tires blowing up. Like, this whole thing was crazy. There was so many trees that snapped. I mean, there was wood stuck in the, um, there's pictures on my Facebook. Um, I, I'm, I'm not going to insert the pictures here, but there are pictures on my Facebook, and it's a life event on my Facebook. Anyway, um, so I'm probably going to make a public post if anyone wants to see the gruesome pictures of, uh, the car. Anyway, uh, yeah, so, I, um, I hit that side road ramped up over the guardrail, rolled into this campsite, and um, my seatbelt ripped. So, I'm not positive if I went through the windshield, but a lot of people think I did. Because if, if you look at the pictures, there's kind of a hole where I could have gone through. Not quite positive. I was outside of the vehicle when the guy who was following me came down to help me. Um, and, uh, it's just all bits and pieces, but yeah, I, I, I was, I remember being in limbo, like literally not even connected to my body anymore, just in limbo, darkness, it was just darkness swirling around me, and it was like being in a pool of water that had black ink swirling around me, and I couldn't see, and I just felt disembodied, and I could hear whispering, and, and all kinds of shit, and it was just... It was very freaky and very scary, and I knew I was dead. Hmm. Right, huh? Hmm. <laughs> You're so cute. Anyway, um, he's just joining us. But yeah, um... I just remember being outside my body and I knew, I knew I was dead. I just knew I was dead. And I was like, this is it. This is it. I'm done. I'm going to die. And that's just all there is to it. And then the next thing I remember is I, I think I yelled for help. Not sure. But I remember looking up way, way high up. And this was, you know, an embankment. It was quite a drop. So I was looking way high up. And I think I vaguely remember seeing the guy who got out of his truck, who was behind me, up by this the guardrail, way, way far up. And I, I remember trying to yell for help, and I remember him saying, I'm coming, I'm coming to you, don't worry. And, um, so, I don't know if that's real, or if that was a disembodied thing, or what happened, but uh, I do know that I, I definitely died there for a second. Um, I don't know how long it was, but it was a while, and, uh, I don't have a clear, detailed picture of the events that ensued when everyone came to surround me. I just remember people from the campsite coming up, dogs barking, and me just not being able to focus, and I remember smelling all these car fluids and, and just being completely disoriented and tasting blood, and there was dirt and pine, like, there was just dirt in my mouth and there was blood in my mouth and there was pine needles and just shit all over me and I was kicked you know I had blood f coming out of my head um and I it just my my mouth was gross and I remember people asking me questions and I, j I just was in and out of consciousness and I did not know what the hell was going on and um, I remember getting hit with the airbag because uh, as soon as I went up over the guardrail, I hit a tree and it engaged the airbags. And I don't know what the fuck they put in airbags, but let me tell you, this might as well be mustard gas because for weeks after getting hit with that airbag, that dust that comes out of it was just in my lungs and I, oh, I couldn't breathe. Dude, you're going to hurt yourself. No. Stop it. Jeez, you're gonna hurt yourself. Quit trying to jump on the counter. Cats, man. Here, here's a toy. Look. Look at it. Anyway, cats. But yeah, so I don't. I don't remember a lot. 
and I just remember faces and then finally I was it took somebody a while to get cell service to even call for emergency services so I'm glad that uh, the people stopped and you know stayed with me and everything and it, it was just it was really scary and then I remember being in the ambulance and I remember distinctly being in the hospital room and they tested me for every drug known to man that was the first thing they did because the police wanted to charge me with whatever they could, those motherfuckers. They didn't care if I was alive or not. They just wanted to see if they could get me for a DUI or something like that. That's basically what happened. So I got breathalyzed and I got blood drawn immediately. And I remember that. And I remember just being so fucked up. And then I remember, um, you know, they I kept asking for a mirror because they told me I needed stitches on my face. And I was just like, I need a mirror. I need to see this. Are you sure? Are you sure? And they were like, no, 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 you're not going to get a mirror. So they didn't want me to see my face. So basically, I <laughs> I hobbled up out of my bed and to the bathroom and snuck a look at my face. But anyway, I remember laying in the hospital bed and looking out into the, like the nurse's pod area, you know, where there kind of walks around and there's just doors to every room or, or curtains or whatever. And this little girl looked at me. And she looked terrified, so I knew my face was messed up. I just knew it. I was like, and I smiled at her like, I'm, I don't want to traumatize you. <laughs> so yeah, um, when I looked in my face, this, let's see if we can, this right here. I don't know if you can see that. Right, right there, there's a scar. Um, all this was flayed open and hanging like this. Like this skin was down here. And I could see my skull. And, um, it was bleeding and bleeding. And, um, <laughs> this right here was bleeding like crazy. And then I have a scar in here that was bleeding like crazy. And, um, yeah, they ended up having to put stitches right here in my face. Um... And yeah, my, this eyebrow has been permanently fucked since then. But, you know, whatever. I make it work. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I got stitches in my face. And then finally got a hold of my mom. And, and someone called Charlie. And he came to get me. And long story, that's Charlie is my grandma's ex. And he lives up the hill from her. And he's an ex-pilot. He's, he's basically like my grandpa. And he was home. But like I said, my grandma was in Dubai. So... She had to be notified and like she didn't find out till the next day, whatever. Um, but yeah, Charlie came to get me and he came to take care of me and everything, and and it was good because I didn't I didn't have anyone else and it was just a very lonely feeling and I just wanted my mom and then I eventually skyped with her and she couldn't believe how my face looked and it was just I was just embarrassed and it, I didn't know for years. For years what that was I didn't know what it was and then finally you know let's see I was 18 at the time and it took till I was about 21 20 something 21 20 yeah 21 to get an actual bipolar disorder diagnosis and uh, to be told that was a manic swing and I'm not just like naturally just a bad person I guess I don't know there's a lot of self-loathing involved in all that I think my grandma, for a while, I think she thought it was a suicide attempt and told people that, maybe. And that just fucked me up, because I did not intentionally crash that car. Oh my god, I did not. It was her van. I feel bad about it to this day. It's been nine years. But yeah, I mean, that's when I really started to get a clear indication that something was extremely wrong with me. Um, when water heaters are speaking to you, and you can't sleep for days on end, and you're just... Descending into madness, you, you kind of start to wonder. But yeah, I mean, that's my live day story, I guess. My mom texts me every year, and I just, I'm not mentally prepared sometimes to remember all that. But yeah, October 5th, 2012, I almost didn't make it. And this crash occurred at like 3 p.m. There wasn't visibility issues or anything like that. It was just health condition, mental health condition, you know. So yeah, um, that's my fun near-death experience. Fun. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, we all deal with trauma differently, and that's okay. And I just wanted to uh, make a video about that. So, yeah. If you made it this far, thank you. Um, I will be happy to hear from everybody in the comment section, and I will catch you in the next one. Love yourselves and love each other. Bye.